Hello and welcome to part 2F of the Project Cars Tuning Guide. In this video I will cover what I consider to be the basic gearing adjustments in project cars as well as the basic engine adjustments. These include final drive, fuel load, wastegate pressure, brake mapping and restrictor. Let's start with gearing. For basic gearing only adjust the final drive of the gearbox. The shorter or smaller the number is, the quicker you will change gears. This is as the car is under geared to allow you to have great acceleration. Acceleration comes at a price though, as your top speed will be limited compared to that of a car with a longer final drive. Acceleration is key at tracks such as Monaco, but at Monza, while yes you can pull out of the chicanes faster, the straights are so long you will easily be caught. Adjust the final drive so that you achieve top speed when the car is in top gear and just about to red line. If you feel you may need to draft the car ahead in a race, then allow for some leeway before the red line. However, this will make you slower in qualifying. Let's move on to the engine tab. Fuel load is, yep you guessed it, the fuel with which you start. Always run with the least amount of fuel you can, as fuel is weight. Qualifying fuel load should be just enough for you to do an outlap, one or two fast laps depending on whether you are a confident qualifier, and an inlap. The race fuel should be just enough for you to finish the race, unless of course you are endurance racing in which case it's how much fuel you will have before the first pit stop. When in practice, find out how much fuel you use per lap. Then, multiply that fuel used by the number of laps you intend to run in qualifying to find your qualifying fuel load. Multiply the fuel used per lap by the number of laps in the race. Then add in a safety margin so you don't run out. It is very unlikely you will use the exact same amount of fuel each lap of a race, so this is why you need a safety margin. One or two laps is usually enough. When you are drafting the car ahead, you will use less fuel. This is as there will be less drag, as the car ahead is punching a big hole in the air for you, so there is less resistance. Remember, Fuel is used most when on throttle. If you are a person who frequently uses the throttle, you will use more fuel than those who don't throttle overlap when on the brakes, or those who don't blip the throttle to keep the turbo spooled. Fuel averages can be measured if the car has a MoTeC digital dashboard. Let's move on to brake mapping, as this can affect fuel load. The greater the brake mapping number, the more throttle is applied by the ECU when you are braking. The more throttle applied by the ECU, the more fuel you will use. Why does the ECU apply throttle? This is to prevent the rear axle from locking. You can reduce the brake mapping setting if you feel comfortable doing this by yourself. The higher the brake mapping number, the more the car will push into the corners. So the, more car, so the more the car will understeer. If the real axle locks under braking, then increase the brake mapping number. Wastegate pressure is the air pressure at which the wastegate will be opened, relieving the pressure on the turbo. If the turbo pressure is too high, it is likely to fail. The turbo pressurizes and heats air before entering the engine. This means that fuel will ignite quicker as the maximum temperature during combustion will be higher. The fuel however can detonate, where rather than a flame front propagating through the air fuel mixture, it instantaneously ignites. This will cause damage to the cylinder walls and the piston head and so will increase wear on the engine. Have the wastegate pressure as high as possible as you will get more power. 
but make sure it is low enough to allow you to finish the race before the engine fails. The shorter the session, the higher the wastegate pressure you can use. Finally, we move on to the restrictor. Restrictors will only be used if the series has a balance of performance rule or you are entering a car that has a superior top speed. The smaller the restrictor, the less air will get to the engine. The less air, the less power produced. As the ECU puts in the right amount of fuel by measuring the air, you will also use less fuel. The larger the restrictor, the more air will enter the engine, so you will get more power. It's as simple as that. That concludes part 2F of the Project Cars Tuning Guide and was the final instalment of basic tuning. Coming soon will be advanced tuning, where all other Project Cars tuning variables will be discussed. Thank you for watching the video, please leave a like if you found it useful and remember to subscribe. If you have any feedback about the video or the series then please leave a comment down below.